when I think of you Like champagne and caviar You're such a treat Like cherries to believe You're all so sweet You and my appetite Each time we meet Oh, James, it's true I get hungry when I think of The Urban Peasant is brought to you by Whirlpool Home Appliances. A job well done. The Dairy Farmers of Canada, bringing something good to the table. Hi there, we're going to do green beans today. Now everybody knows about, you know, green beans, they come... They're one of the few vegetables you can get most of the year round, and they can nearly always look bright. Buy them when they're nice and crisp, and they crack. I mean, even more better when they actually sound. That's what a green bean should taste like. We're going to make a soup. For, we're going to make a lot of things. This is another kind of green bean. comes from Hawaii. Chinese food uses a lot of these. If you want them for Halloween, you can... Do yourself something wonderful, yeah? But they're green beans, so we use those instead of these in a bit. First of all, I want to make this really great soup. Now, this is your green bean soup, all right? Most of it's made out of leftovers. Put the pan on the fire and put a couple of tablespoonfuls of olive oil in there. If you want to put butter in, put butter in. It's your decision, not mine. The bean beans for this soup we're going to cut up. We're going to cook with onion. Now, you can use an onion, or if you haven't got an onion in the house, you can always down at the corner store get some green onions. Now, this is quicker than a food process, so watch this. We'll cut the whole lot, the onions and the green beans. So this is why chefs have big, long knives. Now, just chop that up. Green beans and onions. There we go. About the same amount of each. Much the easiest way to do this, all right? Now, hot oil. Sizzle, all right? And there we go. Green beans and onions put in there. Right in the saucepan, just to get together. Now, we want some garlic. I just put a couple of cloves of garlic. Put some salt on the board. Squash the first clove of garlic into it. And then squash the second one into it. Right, now chop it up fairly small to start with. In the salt, see what's happening to it. It's all being chopped up. It's not flying all over the place because the salt gives it friction. Like putting salt under, sand under the tires when you've got a you know, an icy weather. Same principle. And um, now what you do with it is squash it down a lot and slide on. Let me see if I can show you. Slide on. Then it starts to get all the juice out of it. That goes in there. So we've got garlic, onions, green beans, and we'll give it a stir in really hot oil. Give it a stir so it starts, so everything gets kissed. Snoopy, have a look at, see how that hot oil turns everything that brilliant green in there. Can you see? Isn't that lovely, dark, intense green? That's what happens when you put it into really hot oil and with a little bit of salt. Now, green beans, some rice, and I've got a bit of chicken stock here. Now, if you put butter in there, instead of oil. You wouldn't really need the stock because the butter mixes with the oil and makes the stock, but I'm going to put a little bit of stock in there. I'm also going to put this cooked rice in, but I want this to get hot and cooked first. And how will I know it's hot and cooked? Because it will smell nice. It will get that nice, warm, lovely. And this is the way to cook. This is the way to get people to think, I wonder what he or she is going to make, for, if you can teach your dog to cook, they will say, I wonder what it is going to make for me this evening. But, you know, you make things smell nice. And as soon as this starts to smell good, 
and it would smell even better with butter. In fact, I'm going to just to cheat on this. It's not in the recipe that I usually use. I'm going to put a little bit of extra butter in there just to give it that flavour. Right, and then, as soon as we've got the, the butter and the nice smell coming out of it, we put in some cooked rice, leftover rice, all right? And we stir it all around again so that the, the oil or the oil and the butter or the butter, whatever you got in there, is coated. We've got salt because we put it in with the garlic, put in some pepper. Right. And we're going to flavor this when it's cooked with fresh mint. It's a, oh, I mean, green beans are a very big thing in Turkey and I suppose we're going to use a couple of Turkish recipes today. But get it all mixed together and smooth and then dump in stock or hot water and let it cook for about five minutes. That's all you need. It's just got to come to the boil and cook for about five minutes. I'm going to come back in two minutes and we're going to do a whole bunch of other stuff with green beans. It's easy and quick and simple and cheap and wonderful. <laughs> Toasting some walnuts because I want to, we, green bean chill, that's what we're doing, right? No, I'm going to cook green beans. If you're going to cook green beans, cook them in lots and lots of boiling water. And because I'm going to do a lot, I've got my biggest pan on it, so it's full of boiling water, all right? Again, if you're going to cook green beans, put salt in the water, boiling salted water, okay? And then dump your beans in like that and even put these others in. What we're going to do is a Turkish dish and a Filipino dish. And we're going to use Hawaiian green beans. Right? You use what you've got. That's the big thing. Now, the big thing about beans is not to cook them for longer than four minutes. They need four minutes in boiling water and that's it. So while that's happening, let's make some things. This is for the Turkish green beans. We're going to put some toasted walnuts in there. For the Philippine green beans, we're going to have toasted almonds, so they can go back on there. Don't forget, four minutes. Better set the timer or something. A um, couple of cloves of garlic for the Turkish one, all right? And some breadcrumbs, about half a cup of breadcrumbs. Just dump that in there. We want the juice of a lemon, all right, just squeeze it in there and strain the pips out, if there's pips in there through your fingers, all right, and some olive oil, about a third of a cup, this is a, a sort of mayonnaise, but because you do it in the food processor, you don't need to, you don't need to be so, so fussy about drib dribbling it in as it goes round and round, no. That's the oil. We want some pepper and some salt. Salt and pepper. Crank the pepper into your hand so you can see how much you've got. Because if you're just waving it over the dish, you never know. So there you are, you've got enough in there. Okay, that's it. Just take your food processor, put the lid on. People don't put the lids on food processors redecorate their kitchens very quickly. All right, just put that on the top there and whiz it all together. Breadcrumbs and oil and pepper and salt. We put a little bit more oil in there to make it into a dressing. All right, because this is what it is and this is something you can put on fish or potatoes, but it's particularly good with with um, green beans. All right. Get that back on there. Put that back. There it goes. Now you can hear it. Being really smooth. Okay, that's done. Almonds. Toasting. A little bit of coconut. No, shake that. Give them a couple of minutes just to come together. All right, 
turn the heat right down to low. That's good. There. Just until you can smell it being toasted. Right. Now what we're doing, look at the soup. Taste it. That's really delicious. That was really, I mean, you saw how we did that. It was really, really simple. Okay. Beans. Almost done. About 30 seconds to go. And then we get ready. Here we are. There's the start. The coconut's starting to get toasty and nice. All right. And we want a bit of butter in there now. In with the in with the coconut and the other. We don't put the butter in first, because if we had done, when the butter gets hot, it burns very quickly. We wanted to get the heat onto the walnuts. So now we're just gonna get the, onto the almonds. Now, so now we're just gonna let that toast together. And by the time we're ready, we get these beans. I'm gonna put that soup over there. You can, let me put the heat under just to keep it boiling. There, and you can have a look. And I've got room to mess here. Beans, see, once again, see they went into boiling water and they're bright, bright green. And we just take them out. We're gonna drain them into there for a moment. We just take them out and you can, they got to be crisp. You don't want them fully, you don't want them totally cooked. You just want them just crisp, all right? There we go, no. This is really easy. Um, wooden spoon, that's what I want. Right, butter. Now that is enough to make anybody want to eat. There's toastiness. See the toasty colors in that coconut. All right, now this is going to, and the butter. Let's give it a nice richness. That's ready to go. All we've got to do with this, is so those beans are hot, is take some of these green beans and put them in with the, with the, that's too many, in there, and just toss it all together, let it cook for a minute, so it all gets coated, and turn it out on a plate. This one, we get ourselves a plate, lots of beans, all right, this is enough to turn anybody on at a, at a dinner table. And it's quick, and it's easy, and it's wonderful. There, all right. Now we made all this nice stuff. It's nice. Look. Once again, let's get a tasting spoon. Have a look. See how nice that is. Toasted. Just sprinkle it over the top. All right. Just a little, not too much of it, because it's rich and it's gorgeous. Okay. And then, what we're gonna do with it is get some parsley and chop up the parsley very quickly. Let's get that out of the way. Parsley over the top. You've got green beans, Turkish style. Here, we've got Filipino style, green beans, with toasted coconut and toasted almonds. Out there once again, some chopped parsley. There we go. That on the top to give it a little bit of color. And we're, you know, that's how you cook. Real quick and easy, green beans. I'll be back, we'll do something else. Don't go away. doing green beans right so here we go boiling water just like we had last segment and there we go dump a lot in there for no more than four minutes don't forget four minutes okay while that's happening this is this is a really great salad get some I've got some leftover beef and I've got some barley all right if you haven't got leftover barley and who doesn't no, some of you haven't got leftover barley. So use rice, use leftover rice. It's, you know, I just like barley because it's one of those great nourishing things. Now, to get this going, 
We're going to cut that leftover meat as thin as we can. And it never hurts to get a bit of string off there. Never hurts to freeze leftover meat for five minutes if you want to cut it really thin. But if you haven't managed to freeze it, look, don't try pushing your knife through. I'll show you this over and over again. Slide it and it will cut it nice and thin. Now, I don't know whether you can hear, but they keep getting little pops coming out of here. This is the, yeah, now I heard that one. It's just not gonna do it for me now. But what it is, it's the beans cooking, and that means they've got about one and a half minutes to go. So here we go. We get a nice salad bowl, and we will make this, I don't think that bowl's big enough, is it? Bowl big enough? I'll put it on this big plate. That would be better. All right. So we'll put the leftover barley or rice on the plate. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get all the stuff ready. We'll put the meat on top of it as well, like that. We get some orange juice ready. How do we get some orange juice ready? We cut an orange in half, so that's ready to go. Okay. We want some basil, which we're going to cut. Oh, there's a bit more meat. Get some nice fresh basil. You do this when beans are cheap, when basil's in season. Just cut it. Don't chop basil. It doesn't like it. Cut it, slice it thin. All right? Then it tastes better, and you get more flavor out of it. There we go. Right, we've got basil. We'll put that on there, like that. Okay. Now we get some little bit of salt on the top like that. The beans I can hear finally popped. Well, now what I do usually with beans, what did I do with that thing? Here it is. What I usually do is dump them in the sink into boiling water. I haven't got any. I'm not gonna want it over the sink. Now I've got some ice water just to show you. The trick is to stop them cooking immediately. So we'll dump this into ice water. Martha Stewart showed me this. I have an autographed copy of her How to Put Beans into Ice Water. It's a wonderful book, and you should really read it. Um, here you are. Green beans. Get those out there and pop them into the ice water so that they stop cooking, and they're still crunchy. They've got a different crunchiness to what they had when we first started out, but there you are. So we've got that. Mm -hmm. Just let them... We'll cook. Right. Now, I'm going to have to drain them, so I guess I'm going to have to go to the sink anyway. So hang on. Here we go. Cold beans. And I'll chuck a bit of ice out of there. Like that. So now we've got really cold beans. If you want to be fussy, dry them. But I'm not going to be fussy, so we won't dry them. You can dry them if you want to. Now, Make them look good. Put them around this salad. See, this is your leftover meat, and it doesn't matter if it's lamb or pork or beef or whatever. It's something that you can do quickly and simply and nicely when your next door neighbor dumps a whole bag of green beans on your doorstep and runs away. All right, now we're gonna take a little bowl Put the lemon juice, the lemon juice, it's orange juice, into the, uh, the dish here. We're going to put a little bit of salt with it. We're going to put a little bit of pepper with it. All right. And we're going to get some fresh mint. If you haven't got fresh mint, go to the drawer and find dried mint. Do you want to have a look in here, Snoopy, and see how nicely organized I am? Isn't that just great? You should do that in a drawer in your kitchen. It's worth it sometimes. It's really a nice thing to do. Okay, dried mint. So we use that instead. About a teaspoonful of dried mint, orange juice, and some oil. All right. Just grab yourself a fork. And if you haven't got a fork, get something else. Whoops, you don't try not to make a mess, but there's the dressing. So you pour that over the whole thing. And you have got yourself 
a very nice looking, I mean, that's lunch for whoever you happen to have to lunch. It's just great. It's very quick, very easy, and very nice. Oh boy, nice. The Urban Peasant has been brought to you by Whirlpool Home Appliances. A job well done. The Dairy Farmers of Canada, bringing something good to the table. Right, now green beans, here we are. The soup was the fruit. I was going to put it in there, but I decided that would be better. This is not... I'll have a look in it. It's not a soup bowl, it's a mold, but I don't care. It just looks a nice colour. So I'm going to put all my nice green bean, green bean and rice soup in there. And I'm going to garnish it with fresh chopped mint leaves. Give it a little stir. And this is absolutely gorgeous. It's really lovely. It's got a fresh, sweet smell to it. All right. We made these. Turkey style with walnuts, nice, nice cooked walnuts and made a dressing. Philippine style with coconut and almonds in it. A nice salad out of green, cold green beans and leftovers, rice or barley, whatever you want to do. I mean, really easy stuff. And this is, you know, food looks nice and clean and tidy and bright if you do it. So, yeah, can't tell you anymore. Buy green vegetables when they're very fresh and the only other thing you have to know is don't overcook them. The most vegetables will be done in boiling water in four minutes and immediately put them under cold water and stop them cooking. They're nice and crisp and fresh still. That's it, you know, simple ingredients, simple recipes at the Urban Peasant. Thank you for coming and thank you for letting me have a good time and I hope you do exactly the same thing in your own kitchen. So. Thanks, bye.